one in six Irish adults has very low levels of literacy. Even more have low levels of numeracy. At these levels, a person could have problems with understanding the instructions on medicines, filling in an application form, adding up a bill, or helping children with homework. The National Adult Literacy Agency is a charity that works to ensure people with literacy and numeracy difficulties have access to educational opportunities and can fully take part in society. Since we were set up in 1980, we have supported many people return to education to improve their reading, writing and math skills. Very often this has life-changing benefits. Not only do they learn the technical skills of reading and writing, but they gain the confidence to learn other new skills and it has a positive ripple effect in their families, community and society. Today, to mark the 40th anniversary of the National Adult Literacy Agency, we are launching Voices, a wonderful new collection of short stories and essays edited by one of Ireland's best known authors, Patricia Scanlon, and published by New Island. And what better way to mark our 40th anniversary than to hear some of the stories from Voices. This childhood memory is so slight that I ask myself why I recall it so well. I think it is because it was the moment when I sensed that one day I would become a writer. However, I was too young back then to understand what I was feeling. But I remember the day so clearly. I can still smell the floor polish and the shining lino. I can still feel the grains of sand stuck between my bare toes when I cross the big bedroom. I can still feel warm summer air coming in the open window. I am upstairs in Mrs. Butler's guest house, a mile outside Court Town in Wexford. It is my family's summer holiday in 1969. Flies swarm under trees near the house. Crickets chirp from the long grass. Age 10, I sit alone on one of three beds in a large back bedroom. Here at night, my parents sleep in one bed and my sister in another. My older brother and I share the third bed. My father is a sailor. He only enjoys nights at home with his family in Fingness if his ship is loading in Dublin port. This is what makes summer holidays so special. We are all together. The summer of 1969 is not our first holiday at Mrs. Butler's, but it will be our last. Some months later, days before Christmas, my mother dies. Childhood changes for me forever. But as a child, sitting alone upstairs in that guest house, there is no hint of sorrow to come. Mrs. Butler's house feels huge. The steps to her kitchen are out of bounds. Other families also stay there. A Cork family seem posh because they have a car parked on the gravel. The boy whose father owns the car dances to a song, Viva Bobby Jones, playing on the radio. At night, other music fills the night air in Court Town. At dusk, in the swelling lights of a fairground, a song by the speakers blares from loudspeakers. It is called, The Carnival is Over. For years afterwards, I cannot listen to it. It brings back too many memories. The funfair smells of chips and hot dogs. Children run in the shadows, faces covered in candy floss. I walk among boots where men try to win prizes. Teenage girls whirl overhead, screaming in the swing chairs that spin around. Mrs. Butler is kindly, but I'm slightly scared of her. Mary, her gentle, elderly helper, carries jugs of milk from a nearby farm. The boy from Cork goes to play pitch and put with his father. I tag along excitedly. On the first tee, his father asks me if I wish to hit one shot. Golf is new to me. I raise the club, nervous and excited. A man comes running. He shouts that I have not paid. My club stops inches from the ball. I am afraid to hit it. The cock father does not offer to pay for me. My fingers long to have just once struck a golf ball. Beside Mrs. Butler's house is a field with a pond. I play alone there. Loud crickets sing everywhere. I cannot spy them despite spending hours searching. A donkey watches me with patient eyes. Flies buzz around his face. My brother 
and the Cork by kick football on the gravel. Local children stand at Mrs. Butler's gate to watch them like they are film stars. My mother comes to the front door. She calls us in for dinner. There are desserts I am afraid to taste. They look like the frog spawn in the pond. The adults at the table talk about gangs of hell's angels seen in nearby seaside towns. A mile away in the dusk, cut down throbs with the sins I have yet to discover. After my mother dies, there are no more family holidays. A quarter century passes before I visit Court Town again. By then, I am a father myself. Driving my young sons to Hotel in Rosslare, I decide to show them Mrs. Butler's. As a child, I was here so often that I should be able to find it. But I spend an hour circling small roads. I pass a house three times before I realize I am back again as an adult outside it. Standing at the rusting padlock gate, I need to ask the man next door if this is the right house. It looks so tiny, closed down and empty. Mrs. Butler is long dead. I cannot believe this is the same garden where I played. The room where we ate our meals looks so small. I look down the road. In my mind's eye, I can see the stooped figure of Mary carrying milk. I can see my family leave this house, setting off for another day on Courtown Beach. I remember us waiting for that magic moment of catching our first glimpse of the sea. I can see us walking home from the funfair at night. The road is so small that my car blocks it. I do not climb the wall to peer into the empty rooms. Instead, I close my eyes. In my mind, I walk again up those stairs with the long week stretching ahead. I remember that moment when my family went downstairs and left me alone. Later, I will understand the feelings that came over me as I sat there. I will recognize it as the moment when poems enter my head. But at 10 years old, I am just puzzled by this feeling of wanting to stop time, to remember everything about that moment, the summer air blowing through the window, the drone of crickets, the sand between my toes. I remember sitting there, tired and happy. I remember pressing my forehead against the window. I know I will never forget that room. Then I hear my brother call me from the stairs. I turn and run happily down to my family. None of us know what joys and sorrows are to come.